This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, so progesterone contraception. So what are the things there? Uh, uh, progesterone only pill is there, and there are two types of pill. So one is a uh, Saraget that contains desogestrol, another one contains levonorgestrel. Another one is this uh, um, IUS, LNG IUS or Marina coil that also mm -hmm. releases LNG. And then uh, there is a progesterone injection that is a Depo Provera and there is an implant. Okay, so uh, what will I'll be doing, I'll be discussing all contraceptions together, um, a form of progesterone contraceptions. Then uh, mm -hmm. towards the end, we'll do questions, fine. So now we are starting with pills. So uh, these are, uh, what is the mechanism? So, uh, see, these are there are four types of progesterone contraceptions, and a little bit change in the me mechanism of action. And uh, it is important to remember this. Why it is important? Because uh, you know uh, you will get in a question SBA you will find, and the co uh, question will come from the mechanism of action. Okay, so it is very important. So the POP, what is the mechanism of action of a POP or uh, like progesterone only pills? Also, we call them as a mini pill as well. So uh, what they, uh, what it it increases the volume and velocity, uh, viscosity of cervical mucus. So just prevents sperm penetration to upper reproductive tract. So this is one action. Another action is uh, they, they it causes suppression of ovulation. But as I said. There are two forms. So one is a desogestrol, that uh, that is the Saraget. Uh, this Saraget. So inhibition of ovulation will be there in 97% of the cycle. But second form of tablet is LNG. Okay, that contains levonorgestrol. In that cycle uh, pill, only 60% of the um, ovulation suppression will be there. Fine. So these two things are different, and you will find many times SBA. So uh, in desogestrel, you will find that 97% of the cycle will be anovulatory or the ovulation will be suppressed. So this is the second mechanism of action. Third mecha mechanism of action, though they are very small, but yes, it is there. And it is important for you, uh, you people to know because sometime in one stem of the SBA can come. Okay, so there will be endometrial changes that uh, hinder implant and also reduction uh, uh, somebody somebody's mic is on Deepika, your mic is on please off it switch it off Deepika, your mobile yeah thank you so uh, other modes will be endometrial changes that will not allow in uh, implantation and also there will be reduction in the cilia activity of fallopian tube so these are uh, four mechanism of action so first change in volume and viscosity of cervical mucus that will not allow sperm penetration second suppression of ovulation it will be 60 percent in uh, lng pill it will be 97 percent in uh, desogestrel pill or saraget pill okay another will be endometrial changes that will not allow implantation another will be though these are very small you know reduction in the cilia activity in the fallopian tube so these are uh, uh, the f uh, action for ser uh, for a, a mini pill or progesterone only pill. Fine. So if, these are very effective. So if these are used effectively, these are more than 99% effective. Now you will find. So um, uh, another thing what is important is to know a drug interaction and POP. So usually, um, um, if, if the patient is taking POP and they are also taking enzyme inducers, so usually they are advised to use either progesterone injection or intrauterine contraception. Why they are required? Because the POP and implant, or these are the, the two progesterone uh, contraceptions, they have interaction with enzyme inducers. Okay. So many of the people, you know, make mistake. They think implant as it is inserted inside, so it will not be affected by enzyme inducer. So, um, but the thing is not like that. So make it like you have to fit it into your head 
that implant is also affected by enzyme inducer this thing is important only injection is okay injection will not be affected by inducers and also intrauterine thing the, the devices that will also be not affected so what are safe it is I, um, lng ius or injection these are the two form of contraceptions that you can give to the person who is taking enzyme inducers okay now few things if this stem also you will find many of the questions so now if the person is taking enzyme inducer for shorter interval of time less than two months and they are also taking pop then additional contraception will require for 28 days afterwards once they have stopped this enzyme inducer so they have to take in the, this additional precaution 28 days after so this 28 days after you have to remember because you will find question from here and also this is one thing second thing if the patient is so, uh, was on enzyme inducers okay so uh, now they are starting on pop so they have to they are advised to use additional contraception or condom until 28 days after the last dose of enzyme inducer because enzyme will be in an induced state and their uh, action to come back it will take 28 days time so additional precaution will be required for 28 days okay now this or if this you will find question uh, missed pop pill so how the things has to be done in in, uh, in too much of details i discussed in last uh, class also if coc is missed what what you have to do this is very common question okay now i'll give you answer to that as well missed pill so this is the summary for missed pills so uh, like uh, uh, you have the pill that is missed okay you have that pill patient has to take apart from rest of the rest left of a pill in the packet also has to be taken and here additional contraception is two for two days so this thing is important to remember additional contraception what we did in last class that is for chc was for seven days in pop it is for two days only okay so the, this part uh, please remember otherwise mistake will happen apart from this ec that is emergency contraception will only be necessary if the intercourse had happened after a missed pill but if you find a scenario where they say only she has missed a pill but they never uh, uh, put in the, um, the question that intercourse has also happened then your answer will be this uh, three columns okay take missed pill take rest pills as usual and take additional contraception for two days but if they add in your question that she had an emergency intercourse during that period then you have to add, uh, add um, if she has unprotected sex then you have to as add ec also so this is the chart this is from guideline that you know that but this is the summary so this appears to be a bit complex if you could remember all these four lines then you are going to solve your question and it has to be right Another important thing that has to be remembered in POP is this. So if now we are desogestrel, we or uh, we I, we just uh, uh, learned that it inhibits ovulation in 97% of the cases. Okay, so like it has got a so if the, uh, like a 12 hour lay uh, till 12 hour, nothing has to be done. Okay, if it is more than 12 hour, that is. 36 uh, uh, hours from the last pill so she has taken a pill one day then there will be a gap gap of 24 uh, hours in that 24 hours she has to take pill so if it is she is late by 12 hours then only this much is required so desogestrel has a go, got a big bigger window so she has got a 12 hours late if it is she is less than 12 hours late actually all this thing will not be required now come to traditional pill what is traditional pill traditional pill is the lng so in the lng because the ovulation is suppressed in 60 percent what we read just now so it, it has got a less window so if the she uh, next day pill she late only by three hours then she has to do all all um, all these things she has to do okay so you have to remember in your question you have to read, read it well two things are important what type of pill this patient is taking whether she was taking lng pill 
then if she is three hours more than three hours late all uh, answer will come from here and desogestural pill if she's on on desogestural pill then she has a bigger window of 12 hours if if she is late by 12 hours then all this thing has to be done is the thing clear it appears to be a bit uh, complicated is is um, is the summary for missed pop is clear to you any questions okay good now what is the interaction with bmi and uh, pop so if the weight is more then only uh, uh, or the patient is overweight but the dose will be same you know it is nothing that you have to increase the pill dose of pill or like she has to use alternate method please explain what you want to explain nivedita what you want me to explain again concept of a uh, missed pill you want miss pill to repeat it again yes ma'am little bit confused okay what is the confusion tell me your confusion should i write or should i tell like, like that only uh, yeah yeah, yeah yeah you have to uh, anyone can okay ma'am ma'am actually this one more than 27 hours and more than 36 hours i mean i'm 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 uh, jungling in between that coc and this also it is all going uh, how to interpret the question uh, only that is the problem condition i'm getting what all the condition but if how to interpret the question suppose if it is saying it is 3 hours late or if it is 12 hours late how to interpret it okay so let me uh, let me uh, tell you so actually uh, in pop uh, uh, for example patient takes pill uh, 8 pm daily okay so next day she has to take uh, 8 pm only so now if uh, uh, she is taking pill after 11 um, pm that means she is 3 hours late okay then she has to follow all this but if she she has to take pill at 8 pm but she has taken before 11 pm so nothing she has to do this is for traditional pill lng pill is it clear nivedita ma'am huh. yes ma'am okay now come to second pill that is desogestral pill desogestral hmm. pill so patient yesterday she took at 8 pm today she has yeah. to take at 8 pm okay these are 24 hours but okay ma'am if this patient takes a pill next day morning 8 am that means 12 hours so if okay, she is taking that within 12 hours so she has to do nothing but in the morning also after 8 am she is taking pill that means she yeah. is late then more than 12 hours. hours more than 12 hours then she has Jee. to do all this okay okay ma'am okay got it is clear ji ji ekdam 100% ma'am okay okay fine now a uh, correlation with bmi actually there is no correlation with bmi so th and there are no evidences that if the patient is heavy weight weight that dose of a pill has to be increased so it is like same pill will go fine then if this vomiting and pop you may get this question so if patient has taken pill pop pill and there had been a vomiting within 2 hours then she has to take another pill fine so this this stem you have to remember because you can get sba from here now few things another question will come if the pop is started first 5 days of periods within 21 days of postpartum after delivering a baby or within 5 days of uh, abortion these if the pill is started in between this time no additional contraception is required but if the pill is started any uh, any other time after this then she has to take additional contraception for two days for example if uh, now uh, if if she is starting pill on the 10th or 11th day of her cycle okay in that situation you have to say 
and starting a pill but you know protection will come late so for two days you have to use additional contraception so this is important to remember but these days are safe that you already know that first five days of periods first five days of abortion and first 21 days of postpartum if if the pill is started in between this time then no additional contraception is required and one thing important you have to remember for chc we did in last class additional contraception was for seven days but only for pop it is two days so you have to remember that that uh, chc additional contraception for, was for seven days and here pop it is two days so this you have to remember otherwise you know you will make mistake between this two and seven also then pop also it has got some uh, health risk and also some benefits also okay some correlations you have to know so uh, uh, like you already know a uh, desogestrel pill so we we know that in 97 percent of the cases there will be inhibition of uh, ovulation so it will be beneficial in this menorrhea this will not go for uh, uh, for a traditional pill because there uh, the suppression of ovulation is only in a uh, 60 percent of the cases okay so uh, dsg desogestrel serajet it is beneficial effect in dysmenorrhea now the, the coming to breast cancer correlation so there are limited evidence that there is increased risk when the patient is taking uh, this uh, pop that it there will be increased risk because of this pop but uh, if there is an increased risk also then it is very small and the risk will be over okay so patient will not not uh, at a risk if she stops that medication okay so, so there is a small increased risk or risk of breast cancer when the patient is taking this pop pill and it will come back to normal when she stops it similarly there is a risk of pregnancy so pregnancy if happens there could be possibility of ectopic pregnancy why because we just read that it um, slows down the cilia of tu tube so uh, if the pregnancy happen it has to be ectopic and one in ten pregnancy will be ectopic so uh, uh, this number you have to remember they will give you a question patient is on pop pregnancy test has become positive what number of pregnancies can be ectopic so answer will be one in ten now there are certain side effects of pop also the major thing is change in bleeding some of the women they will have infrequent bleeding some of them will have spotting frequent bleeding some of them will have amenorrhea some of them will, may have prolonged bleeding so actually the problem with the pop is that their bleeding uh, 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 menstruation cycle that pattern is lost you know they we really cannot predict when they have bleeding or when they have period so this is an important problem with this apart from this uh, there is no change uh, of weight and there is no uh, change of libido or no gain of weight no loss of libido because of this pop sometime in some stem of the questions you know you will you may got you may ask get this also or sometime part three people will know uh, she will say i'm taking pop will it affect my weight or will it affect my libido so you have to remember no it is not related now uh, you uh, uh, actually pop uh, they gave a 12 month supply so uh, uh, if the patient is coming they can give this pop supply to 12 months now uh, till what age pop can be used so pop can be used till 55 years of age okay why uh, uh, if the patient is taking uh, uh, pop and uh, in your question uh, like uh, they are saying age near 55 then you have to say uh, she has to stop it because by the uh, by that time there will be already a natural loss of ovulation or there will be menopause will already come okay so pop is only one medication that can be taken till 55 years of age now this question from this thing you will get this paragraph you will get a number of questions what you have to understand this 
that if the patient is 50 years of age and she is using a pop okay now and uh, so she will have amenorrhea now you will not know whether uh, whether this uh, menopause has happened or not so what you will do you will do her fhs concentration testing so if it is more than 30 then it is suggestive of uh, ovarian failure or premature has uh, or menopause has happened okay then again uh, you will get a type of question if, uh, how much how much time she has to use contraception if your patient is less than 50 years of age and she had menopause so she has to use contraception for two more years after menopause if your patient is more than 50 years of age and they if she had menopause then she has used contraption for one year more so this this part you will get many times in many questions okay so patient was question will be patient is taking pop and uh, how will you like she has having amenorrhea now uh, what to do uh, to know uh, whether she had been ovarian insufficiency or menopause your answer will come from here fss you will measure on two occasions if it is more than 30 your patient is having menopause another question will come if it is less than 50 yeah, if if she is less than 50 yeah uh, if it is she is less than 50 then after menopause contraception will require for two more years more than 50 it will require contraception will require one more year for menopause this from this part you will get a number of questions is the thing clear is this thing clear or not okay now uh, okay fine now uh, the, what you will do another this type of questions you will find so patient is taking pop or and there had been a problematic bleeding so what to do so like this could be the few options so i uh, could try a different pop okay but two pop will you will not give to improve bleeding or she, you can add estrogen okay so she will have a, a sort of a estrogen progesterone pill or uh, trinexa can be used for unscheduled bleeding but uh, according to the evidence this you you have to use for short term not for very long term all this treatment will be done so uh, any of this thing can be done either uh, she can try a different pop or either estrogen supplementation for short time or trinexa supplement for short time can be done okay so this is the answer if the problematic bleeding is there with pop then pop and bmi and bmi yeah this part we have done uh, right now i have said but as an uh, this is the picture from P, uh, that new B, uh, obesity guideline so P, pop is not affected by patient bmi A double dose is not recommended and during child uh, uh, P, so this part is also important pop can be started any time after childbirth including immediate delivery also okay this is from the postnatal guideline i have put now a few things this uh, i will say i will share the screenshot of this this part you have to remember by heart okay so uh, actually category one category two questions um, um, it is not uh, uh, necessary to remember category one and two because the uh, benefits are more you what you have to remember for each contraception is their category three and four because if three and four are there then you will not um, prescribe uh, the, those uh, contraceptive so what are the um, po uh, uh, like category three for pop so it is stroke if the patient has stroke and uh, PO, uh, if you are continuing pop so it is category three what is meant by continue okay continue means uh, that in the guideline also you will find two things initiation and continue initiation means today i am starting a patient on a pop so that is initiation uh, and continue patient is previously like for uh, like la from few months patient is taking uh, pop so that that is continue so this so this this means like your patient was taking pop 
and she had stroke and if you want to continue even after that then that becomes category 3 for pop for that woman is it clear nalini okay now this is category 3 stroke continue second will be current and history of ischemic heart disease and if you are continue uh, continuing in that that also category 3 this part you have to remember uh, uh, um, like uh, very uh, by heart fast breast cancer in all pop is category 3 present or current breast cancer in all pop is category 4 fine so this you have to remember this uh, decompensate uh, liver part decompensated cirrhosis liver malignancy hepatocellular adenoma this is category 3 and you will find this in all progesterone contraception okay so this is category 3 for pop now you can see only you have to remember this six lines only if you see that table of uk mac category it like it it becomes very difficult what to do in that but if you could easily remember the six things now coming to category 4 only one category 4 that is current breast cancer so this current breast cancer will be for all progesterones so no need to remember category 4 for progesterone because you know there is only one answer to it so this part you have to remember okay so that's uh, this is all about uh, uh, pop uh, till now anyone has got any question about pop can ask me otherwise i am moving to uh, injectable contraceptive any question on pop ma'am what is the treatment uh, for uh, amenorrhea or breakthrough bleeding in uh, pop yeah we we just said this uh, problematic bleeding either she can uh, try with different pop this is one part second part uh, you can supply them uh, supplement with estrogen okay or you can supply them uh, like you can give this your patient tranexa for a short interval of time so this will be the answer is it uh, clear sh- yeah short term and long term like what is the cut off cut off the guy has not been given in the guideline but uh, yes it uh, cut off will be like 3 months usually in all other contraceptions if they are having uh, a problematic bleeding they are giving combined pills for 3 months so you can say this for 3 months but for progesterone guideline has not mentioned anything is it clear so along with pop we give uh, combined contraception anybody's mic is on yes so the, uh, like either you can supply them with estrogen so that will be again coc only so either you can give them estrogen or for a short time you can give tranexa only also tranexa usually given for 3 to 5 days only tranexa is not okay. given long okay ma'am thank you yeah anyone any question with regards to pop uh saima if fsh is less than 30 that means your patient has no menopause she is still in perimenopausal period okay for this kind of patient you have to again repeat fsh after a year or so okay if there is no question then we are moving to we are moving to uh, injections so injections again there are uh, two types of injections so one of them is dmpa we we already know it so it contains a uh, of uh, uh, 150 mg of methoxy progesterone acetate and usually it is in 1 ml and uh, apart from this the, it has got a sub, uh, subcutaneous um, substitute also that is available as an with the name of sinapress okay and it contains a 104 mg of methoxy progesterone acetate in 0.6 um, ml 65 ml okay so sinapress usually you are not asked question you are asked about dmpa only second injection is netin um, but in it is very less commonly used in uk and it is also administered by im 
so like this dose of dmpa you have to remember because sometimes you will find this also in the question so you, uh, it is 150 milligram uh, medroxyprogesterone acetate in 1 ml then where uh, uh, like how this uh, acts so mode of action of uh, progesterone uh, injection is by inhibition of ovulation so this is their main mode you will find question for, from this also dmpa main mode of uh, uh, like uh, action answer will come inhibition of ovulation apart from this it has got some additional effect on cervical mucus or it has got uh, uh, like some some but the this effect on cervical mucus is not that much pronounced okay so poor cervical mucus will be there when to start if you have to start that in the first five days what we did uh, right now for uh, this thing for uh, pop same will be there if it is started within first five days of period first five days of abortion or within 21 days of uh, uh, like uh, a postpartum then no additional contraception will be required apart from this window whenever you are starting any time so here additional precaution will be required for seven days so now you can remember in pop this additional was for two days but in the dmp also it is like chc seven days additional precaution fine now apart from this it makes some unfavorable changes in the endometrium also endometrium also so it makes it unfavorable for implantation so one two and three there are three mechanism of action but main will be inhibition of ovulation only okay now it do have certain benefit you will find many questions from there here also so like uh, usually it it causes amenorrhea spotting reduced bleeding so it may benefit the patient uh, those who are suffering from, from menstrual problem or heavy menstrual bleeding also uh, as it causes uh, suppression of ovulation therefore it reduces uh, pain associated with endometriosis you must be remembering in uh, when the patient of endometriosis come usually we uh, we uh, uh, prescribe this dmpa injection it is usual practice that we are doing in our clinics then dmpa uh, like it is not associated it will not give any protection from uh, uh, it not associated but some protection may come for ovarian or endometrial cancer for how it can come like uh, it will not uh, it is suppressing ovulation and also so this way this there will be some protection for ovarian and endometrial cancer can be there okay this from this line you will get a number of questions so it is a dmp is a contraceptive option for the patient of sickle cell disease why because it reduces severity of sickle cell crisis so this this line from this line you will find many questions okay so this part you have to remember these are the benefits of it so menstrual decrease problem with the menstruation will improve it will uh, decrease the pain of endometriosis and uh, uh, and also it will uh, reduce the severity of sickle cell pain crisis so these are the benefits of dmpa this from this line you will get question now uh, this part is very important to remember about dmp because you will get question from there also actually it causes suppression of ovulation and it causes suppression of ovulation so because of this this estrogen levels estradiol and estro uh, estrone will be less because of that there will be decrease in the bone mineral density okay so because of this because of its this action when the young age woman less than 18 years of age is coming so you usually uh, like uh, you will not offer this dmpa unless there is no other method so actually you will try for alternates or you will counsel that a woman and or girl under 18 years of age relation of dmpa and this bone mineral density it is also important to remember then if the patient is taking dmpa for longer interval of time then she has to be reviewed every two uh, years why you want to review her because of this uh, decrease in the bone mineral density now uh, dmpa uh, can be used till 50 years only 
just now we did pop so pop can you can be used till 55 years of age but dmpa because of this effect on the bone mineral density patient has to uh, you have to stop this uh, injection at 50 years of age okay you will find this question so like from every part of this slide you will find question so it is important to know the relation of dmpa and bone mineral density only this is the one contraception that that has got uh, this effect on bone mineral density apart from this no other contraception is there though there will be increase in bmd for, with the chc okay but decrease part will come with dmpa only so remember this age groups under 18 what it does and when you have you can't offer this patient till uh, to use after 50 years of age also because of this issue okay then uh, dm there is a weak correlation um, between breast cancer and cervical cancer so breast cancer uh, it will increase likely to be increased but it is small and once uh, dmpa is is, is stopped then uh, that uh, increased risk will come back same happens with cervical cancer also okay so there is a weak association and uh, this in though there is with dmpa there is a small increase in the cervical cancer again uh, it is not because of any direct effect on cervix but why why it happens it happens because whenever these patients are using gmpa so uh, you know uh, they already they know that they are using reliable contraception so they can have sex with many uh, multiple they can have multiple sex so uh, and also they will not use con if they are not using condom also so there is a risk of infection sti or there is a very high risk of getting hpv therefore this weak association is there with uh, dmp and cervical cancer increase so it will come back to normal once they have stopped using it now side effects so again the problem with dmpa uh, uh, some of the women they have uh, spotting infrequent bleeding prolonged bleeding and amenorrhea many of the women have amenorrhea if you have given this dmp in your practice then you will find you might have seen that patient will come back i have got no period i have done pregnancy test and it is negative so uh, this amenorrhea occurs too much commonly with this dmpa apart from this like uh, it is associated with weight gain also from this system also you will find questions so um, if a dmpa is given to young girls less than 18 years of age okay and if they have got bmi more than 30 then they will gain a uh, weight and this weight gain will be the um, five percent of their uh, baseline body weight and they will gain in first six months so this point you have to remember because you will find question from here that if young girl is using this B, uh, dmpa uh, bm and they have got a uh, like bmi equal to or like uh, more than 30 then in that particular situation baseline weight gain will may be there it will be five percent and it will be in first six months okay and injection side reaction may occur with this so the, these are so these are the side effects of dmpa now uh, again as we did in pop there is very little evidence or slim evidence to say that it associated with acne decreased libido mood swings headache hot flash so uh, these are uh, not uh, these are not considered as a side effect of dmpa though some women may feel them but the evidence to support all these side effect is very slim or little so main part what you have to remember with the side effect of dmpa is this much okay now where to give it you may find question from this part also what is the site of injection so it is gluteal muscle in the buttock is the preferred site for im injection but if it is not done here the second choice will be deltoid muscle in the upper arm okay so this so you will find question from this line also and uh, uh, we have just read a uh, sinapress that is a subcutaneous dmpa 
where the subcutaneous DMPA is injected, it can be injected in the abdomen or on the anterior thigh. Okay, so um, this may also come as a question, but DMPA site you have to remember. So gluteal muscle in buttock is the first choice of site. Then again, this part we have done, but I'm repeating it again. If the DMPA is given first five days of menstrual cycle, within 21 days of postpartum, first five days of abortion, no additional precaution is required. But if DMPA is starting outside this window, then in that particular situation, they would require additional contraception for seven days. Then uh, when uh, you have to call this patient to get repeat injection, so, so your answer will be, as uh, DMPA uh, is um, uh, uh, like uh, designed to be for 12 weeks only, so every 13th week, they have to come back, okay? But uh, like uh, uh, it can be administered uh, up to seven days late or up to like 14, uh, for 14 weeks after the last injection. No additional contraception will, will be required in this case okay so now till if the patient actually patient when you have given dmpa patient has to come 13 uh, 13th week to take next injection but if your patient is coming till 14th week also then also you need not to give any additional contraception fine so this part you have to remember because you will get question from this part now, if the repeat injection, uh, uh, if the patient has to take repeat injection, now she comes and she says, doctor, I'm going somewhere else. So after 10 weeks also, you can give uh, this uh, DMPA injection. So like if she's going somewhere, so you after 10 weeks, you can give her second injection. Is the thing clear about this repeat injections? Anything, uh, any question till now about DMPA or an injectable contraception? Okay. Now, interaction with enzyme in inducer, very good. We are very happy because injections are not affected by use of enzyme inducer. This part you have to remember by heart. Then injection and BMI. Okay, so uh, uh, usually effective, uh, this is from obesity guideline. Uh, so DMPA uh, is not affected by weight of the patient, okay? But uh, this part, uh, uh, if the patient has got multiple risk factor, though uh, it, it, the patient uh, has a obesity, DMP is uh, UK Mac one only. But if along with obesity, this patient is smoking also, she has hypertension also, she is diabetic, diabetic also, so she is having mm -hmm. multiple risk factor. If multiple risk factor is there, then this DMPA becomes UK Mac three. Okay, this line you have to uh, understand uh, very well. DMPA is UK MAC 1 for uh, obese patient. But if this obese patient has go, uh, got uh, um, multiple risk factors, for example, smoking, diabetes, and hypertension, then it becomes UK MAC 3. You will get question from here. You will get a question, a patient with BMI 35, or um, she is smoking 10 cigarettes, she is taking metformin for diabetes. So what will be the UKMA category? Answer will come UKMA 3. So this part you have to remember. This part you have to, we have just uh, uh, learned now only. So if uh, you are giving this uh, to less than 18 years of age with a body mask uh, index uh, less than or equal to 30, then some weight gain will be there. We just remembered the percentage is 5% of weight gain, gain can be there and it will be 30 in for six months. Okay, then uh, apart from this, if uh, your obese patient is there, what you will do, um, like uh, either you can uh, consider using longer length of needle, okay, or you can consider deltoid administration because uh, if the obesity is too much, so gluteal part injection, though it is considered as a first line, it will be difficult. So there are two options. You will get question, you may get question from there, this line also, because this, uh, uh, this guideline is newly updated. 
then longer length needle will be your one uh, can be one uh, um, choice another choice will be deltoid administration another uh, option will be subcutaneous okay so these are the few things that you have to remember relation of this injectable with bmi this is from bmi guideline then this part you have to remember so the woman should be informed that there could be delay in infertility up to one year after this uh, she discontinues this because this is the, you will find this is the uh, this is only contraception where there is a delay in forty delay in infertility up to one year can be there you will find this also in the questions now uh, this is also important to remember if there had been an unscheduled bleeding with dmpa answer will be mephanemic acid 500 milligram three times daily for five days so uh, now uh, someone will ask me question now if, if the pop and problematic bleeding what we uh, what are the options either we can supplement estrogen or we can give tranexa okay this this we read for pop uh, problematic bleeding now answer to unscheduled bleeding with dmpa is mephanemic acid 500 milligram three times daily for five days this also you will find in the questions now how long injections can be used this i just said uh, but i'm speaking it again injection can be used only till 50 years of age why because of its hypo uh, it causes loss of uh, estro uh, bone mineral density because of hypoestrogenic effect of dmpa that we just read it will decrease estradiol and also esterone so there will be decrease in the B, uh, bone mineral density so we have to uh, we, we should not use more than 50 years of age now uh, 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 after childbirth they can be started at any time this is from postnatal contraception guideline now uh, another important thing is to remember this category 3 so what is category 3 so uh, we just read uk mag is category 1 for high bmi but uh, if along with BMI, multiple risk factor such as smoking, diabetes, hypertension, or uh, like anything, multiple risk factor for cardiovascular disease is there, then do you, it becomes UKMAC3. Okay, this you have to remember. Second part, if hypertension with vascular disease is there, it is uh, again UKMAC3. Current, this part is same. Current history of breast uh, ischemic disease and stroke. This is UKMAC3, this we read in POP also. Another part, un unexplained vaginal bleeding. So this belong, this category um, is uh, this category three for DM, DMPA only. And uh, also it will come for implant also. So uh, this is again category three. All progesterone category, past breast cancer, decompensated cirrhosis, hepatocellular liver malignancy, hepatocellular adenoma so this four will be always there in category three of any progesterone okay so this part will this part is different but this part is same so this is dmpa category three you have to remember this there is no other option than this because unless you remember all this uh, you will not be able to answer all these category or safety questions category four is simple to remember this is only one current breast cancer okay so that's all about dmpa till uh, till uh, dmpa if any one of you have got any question can ask me in uh, DMPA, I, yes uh, can i can i ask like in preeclampsia or eclampsia then uh, if you want post natal contraception is dmpa preferred then uh, i think yes oh, because okay. it is category mm -hmm. uh, yeah it is category three in hypertension with vascular disease. For example, long standard hypertension is there, chronic hypertension, and it is associated with some problem, like renal problem is there, then it will be category three. In uh, your preeclampsia thing, or any, uh, this patient, once she is delivered, she will have, uh, like blood pressure will be controlled. So in that situation, yes, DMPA can be given. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
what uh, uh, nalini what you are saying but associated with obesity with what is it? i don't know nalini you have obesity to ask your question uh, obesity with preeclampsia if it is associated man then again it goes into uk make 3 obesity with preeclampsia uh, uh, yeah then it will be 3 then it will okay, be 3 multiple risk factor yes madam yeah, you, multiple this factor again all of you people what i would suggest you their questions are directly from their guideline okay so don't get confused you know this will be if you remember this your all answers will come fine and we will we will again uh, postnatal contraception guideline we will do in details in such uh, upcoming classes okay so whatever the issues are left today about postnatal that will be cleared in that class okay but this uh, first you remember about general population fine so you have to remember this any other Hello? question yes dr priya this yes. Uh, emergency contraception one table is there in the in this table you know yeah. one uh, table is there that says yeah. uh, 14 weeks one day and uh, if she has uh, multiple uh, episodes of uh, see, less than five days and more than five days there is two columns like that yeah yeah i i didn't understood those two columns they look same okay. but one uh, in, yeah so just wait emergency contraception in details will be coming in the next class so your all questions okay. will be clear okay 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 thank you yeah Okay, till now with dnp any question or pop any question no ma'am carry on uh, it's very clear dr priyata carry on thank you okay thank you yeah good so uh, another type of contraception is this implant okay so in the implant uh, what you have to remember like it is you already know in the in the uk it is single previously in some time in some countries it was a multiple rods also so it, uh, we are reading only about uk only so in the uh, uk it is single non-biodegradable subdermal and it is licensed to be used for three years okay each implant contains a 68 milligram of etonorgestrol this you have to remember you know you will get some question this part is important to remember so it's it release rate for when it is inserted for first five six days it will be six uh, 60 to 70 microgram per day but later on it will reduce down to 25 to 30 microgram per day so uh, this part you have to remember because uh, it is not like uniformly released all uh, three years so first it is more then a 60 to 70 microgram first five to six weeks then it will reduce down to 25 to 30 microgram per day no no other way to remember this you know you have to know this mode of action so again you understand implant it prevent the main mechanism of action is preventing ovulation now uh, also other effects will be there effect will be there on mucus and effect will be there on endometrium so main mode of action is ovulation inhibition. This you have to remember. Same was there with DNPA as well. Now implant uh, is replaced every three years. Until three years, this patient is completely safe. No need of any additional contraception is required. Then uh, if the this this table is same. Uh, like if it is inject, inserted first five days of menstruation, first five days of abortion or within 21 days of postpartum, then ad, uh, no additional contraception is required. But uh, apart, away from this window, uh, additional contraception has to be used for seven days. Okay, this you have to remember because you will get this in the questions as well. Then uh, what is the, how it is re related with the health problems? So as it is, uh, uh, progesterone is acting by inhibition of ovulation. So there will be uh, uh, help in uh, 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 like uh, uh, dysmenorrhea as well. Okay, 
Apart from this, with implant, there is no increased VTE, there is no cardiac problem, but there is, uh, and also there is no effect on the bone mineral density. Okay, so the no, no problem is there. So pro progesterone can be easily used, this implant. Then uh, this part is very important with the implant. You will get question from here. So, you know, if with the implants, there is unpredictable bleeding. Some of the women will have regular periods, okay? Some of the patient, they will have infrequent bleeding. Some of the patient, they will have amenorrhea. So uh, this, uh, this is the problem with the implant because you cannot explain patient what will happen because some of them will have regular periods, some of them will have um, uh, uh, infrequent periods, some of them will have frequent periods or bleeding. So this is one important part. So it is important for basically part three people because whenever they are uh, um, uh, offering implant to role player, they have to counsel them about this. But yes, for part two, it can come in your SBA also. This acne thing is very important to remember because it is associated with implant only. So in some of the women, it will improve. Some of the patient, it will worsen. And some of the patient, it will start, there will be new onset of acne. This acne is, thing is only associated with implant. And with this implant, you know, there is no, uh, this thing is there. Uh, like you cannot just predict it because anything can, can happen. It may start, it may worsen or it may improve. So about the implant, this thing you have to remember because you will get this in the questions. Now implant and enzyme inducer, implant is affected by use of enzyme inducer so if the patient is on implant but she has been prescribed enzyme inducers as well so either she uh, either she has to switch on to another method or additional precaution is required for 28 um, day uh, until 28 days so this part is same it is important to remember that implant is affected by um, enzyme inducers now, along with the BMI thing, so this is from an obesity guideline. So like uh, with the obesity, there is no problem. Implant can be used very well. Okay, so there is no correlation with uh, implant and obesity. So very obese patient can use implant. This part is important to remember for, for all of you people um, that uh, sometime you will find question and answer will come from here only. Okay, so if the implant is missed, so what you will do? So usually when in the part three people will know when we prescribe implant, we always ask role player, you have to come back when you're not feeling this. Okay, if it is if not feeling this, that means it becomes impalpable. So what you have to do? So either, first of all, you have to locate it. So location can be done in the radiology, ultrasound can be done. Okay, uh, or um, uh, like X-ray can be done. But X-ray can be done in next plan on only because it has got some barium thing. Now, if you are able to locate it on the ultrasound, the, it can be removed in ultrasound guidance. This part is easy. But now come to this part, a bit uh, appears a bit different. So if you are not able to identify uh, uh, this implant, then what will be the next step? Then you have to uh, like in. Um, do test and you have to find out eto norgestrel level in the serum okay that means blood test has to be done now if eto norgestrel level has come positive in the blood test then that means implant is still there in the body but you don't know where it is so you have to arrange for mri okay and uh, uh, to locate it but if eto norgestrel uh, is indetectable or the blood test comes as negative for etonorgestrel, then that means implant is not present in the body. So you may get question from this line, this uh, flow chart also. So is the thing clear or not about missed implant? Clear, so ma'am. Okay, uh, um, can you people hear me? Because Nivita, Nivedita said, no, we cannot hear you. Is my voice clear? Yes, okay. So please remember this. This is, yeah, okay, okay, fine. Thank you, thank you. Please explain net. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm repeating this again. If the patient comes, she is not able to feel implant, then what you will do? So next, uh, you have to learn this table. So next part, you have first what you will do. You have to locate it. So either lo uh, you can uh, arrange for an ultrasound or you can arrange for an X-ray. X-ray can be done in next plenum only. Why? Because it has got this barium thing. So it will be visible on X-ray. Um, so it can be done in X-ray. Now, if the uh, implant is visible, then you can remove it by expert person can remove it. You will not remove, I will not remove. Only expertise will remove them under ultrasound guidance. But now you are not, this time is important. You are not able to locate it. If you are not able to locate it, then what you will do? You will arrange for a blood test and you will arrange for etonorgestrel levels in the serum. If you find the level, yes, the blood test has come positive. That means implant is somewhere there in the body of patient. So you have to arrange for MRI to uh, for the detection of implant. But if it is not there, etonorgestrel test has come negative. That means implant is not there inside the body. So this flow chart you have to remember because uh, they can put question from any part of it. Uh, is the thing clear, Nivedita, now? Okay, good. Now, problematic bleeding with implant. So, uh, COC can be given uh, cyclically or continuously for three months. Fine. Now, implant and pregnancy, uh, they have given in the guidelines. So, I have put, though the implant is very effective contraception, pregnancy cannot be there. But anyhow, if the patient becomes pregnant along with the implant, then you have to, if she, and she want to continue pregnancy, then implant has to be removed. So the take home message is this, pregnancy and implant, they cannot run together. If she wants to continue pregnancy, imp implant has to be removed. But if she considered for termination, then she can continue implant as a method of contraception. Okay, so this part you have to know. Because sometimes, you know, pregnancy related questions I have seen once, therefore I have put this slide, better to know this, you know. Then uh, after childbirth, it can be used at any time. Okay, now implant has got some categories. So category you have to remember. So uh, stroke to continue, current and uh, past history of IHD, ischemic heart disease to continue is category three. Unexplained vaginal bleeding is category three. In progesterone, in two contraception, Unexplained vaginal bleeding is category three. It is DMPA and implant. Okay, you have to remember this. In DMPA and implant, unexplained vaginal bleeding is category three. Okay. Uh, like for example, Nalini, if the patient is has come to us and she has got irregular periods or irregular bleeding is there, and you have to offer progesterone contraception. So you can offer her a POP because that is a treatment. But if she patient says, no doctor, I would like to go for implant, you have to say no, because then it becomes category three. Okay, unexplained bleeding for DMP and implant is category three. Just remember this line. Unexplained vaginal bleeding, DMP and implant is category three. This part is important to remember. And uh, this, this, uh, this is category three for every progesterone. Past breast cancer, decompensated cirrhosis, hepatocellular liver malignancy, and hepatocellular adenoma. Fine. Category four is the simplest one to remember in progesterone, current breast cancer. Okay, with this, I have to move to levonorgestrel IUS or marina coil. Any one of you have got any question in implant can ask me. Any question? No, madam. Okay, fine. Now, LNG IUS, you already know this. Okay, so uh, LNG IUS is T shaped, you already know this. And it has, it uh, what it releases, it releases levonorgestrel. This also you have to know. What you have to remember is this part. So it contains 52 milligram of LNG IUS, one thing. Second thing, 
so it it uh, it will be released 20 microgram per day okay but till 5 years after 5 years it will reduce down to 10 microgram per, uh, uh, per day and why it is important because when we use this as a contraception it has been licensed till 5 years only because this much lng is required but it use if it is used as a HRT for endometrial protection it can be extended because in as a if we are using this as an HRT then if if a lesser amount of progesterone is also coming in the body then also that is for endometrial protection that is not for contraception so uh, you have, what you have to remember as a contraception you uh, this can be used till five years okay then uh, okay so it is licensed for three things for contra in uk for contraception for a treatment of hmb and endometrial protection uh, during uh, this hrt okay so now you know your um, heavy hmb guideline heavy menstrual bleeding guideline lng ius is first choice because it is licensed for that. Second, you will find LNG IUS for HRT also. So there are three uses. Fine, for LNG IUS, uh, 52 milligram, that is we call as a marina coil. Another one form is there, that is JDS. This is, a, 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 this is again LNG IUS, but it carries a lesser do, uh, amount of it. So th this will be a 13 point, uh, this, uh, uh, this will be 13.5 milligram. So it contains 52 milligram and it contains 13.5 milligram. And it, it's a release rate for first 24 uh, a day is 14 microgram. Then it reduced down to five microgram per day for, uh, after three years. Okay, so for uh, after th three years, it will release that much less and it is licensed for contraception or, or only it now this jedis it is not used for hmb also it is not used for endometrial protection okay so this part is because some why, why i have put this because sometimes in some stem of question you may find this also so you have to know this now what is the mode of action it has got a little diff different mode of action that you have to understand so what it causes we already know uh, it causes atrophy of endometrium okay within a month one month of insertion there is a uh, atrophy of endometrium so because of this endometrial atrophy implantation uh, prob uh, prevention of implantation is there so it has got very less effect on hpo access more than 75 patient will be continuing ovulation okay so there, there will be ovulation can happen more than 75 percent women with lng i use they will have ovulation now uh, some of the effect can be there on cervical mucus also so this is the, this is important to remember so their main effect is on endometrial atrophy then uh, this part is same for all progesterone we are reading that if it is inserted here it is it is seven days it is not five days in dmpn implant and pill it was first five days we uh, no additional prote protection was required but for lng ius it is seven days if it is inserted within first seven days of period first seven days of uh, all of the people can hear me my boss yes, my voice uh, yes ma'am can hear you go ahead Okay, Nivedita, problem with your internet. Please check your internet, Nivedita. Because all other people can hear me well. Okay, so no additional contraception will be required uh, if it is uh, if it is inserted within the first seven days of period or abortion. Okay, and uh, uh, or uh, within 48 hours of uh, postpartum because it can be inserted within 48 hours of post uh, postpartum. Okay. Yeah, uh, somebody write that she has to check her net. Nivedita cannot listen. Okay, and uh, after four, uh, four weeks of postpartum, and if it is certain that she is not pregnant, 
then also no additional contraception is required but all other time additional contraception for seven days will be required so this part you this is easy to remember first seven days of period and seven days of first seven days of abortion uh, if uh, lng ius you are insert in putting no additional contraception is required all other days seven um, contrac uh, this additional contraception for seven days is required apart from this this you will we will do in uh, a property also it can be inserted it can be inserted within first 48 hours so uh, that is possible and if we if we are not able to insert uh, within first 48 hours of postpartum then uh, we will not insert the copper iucd or lng iucd any iucd then um, the intrauterine device will be inserted after 28 weeks or 28 days so this part you have to remember okay uh, th th this will come uh, later on in the copper tea also so uh, in between this period we usually uh, we do not insert copper tea or iuc uh, this lng ius uh, yeah, uh, yes so 28 days yeah it is 28 days for nalini it is 28 days for uh, intrauterine devices okay for all other oral contraceptions injection it was 21 days but for uh, um, copper coil and for I, uh, lng ius it is uh, uh, like uh, 28 days why it is 28 days because these are intrauterine things uh, uterus is soft so uh, chances of perforation is there fine so this part you have to remember in uh, apart from this window uh, um, additional contraception for seven days has to be there then this part we i have discussed but again i'll be speaking so um, in uk there are two devices marina uh, it will be um, for contraception it can be used for five years for endometrial protection also it can be used for four years and J, uh, jds it is can be used contraception and it is a duration will be three years this part you have to remember jds it is uh, duration is three years only This part is uh, important for you also, but main for part three. So, uh, you know, whenever the, the patient uh, you are going to insert IUCD or we are going to give her any kind of contraception, actually what we do, we what we do is a uh, STI risk assessment. Maybe it is helpful in some of your question because you have to know this, but for part three, it is must to know every part of it. So actually we take sexual history because you have to, we have to do risk assessment for this patient. So what are the risk uh, if, uh, factor that the patient is at a risk of STI? If uh, she is less than 25 years of age, if she has got new sexual partner in last three months, if she has got more than one sexual partner in one last year, okay? If she's having regular sexual partner, she has a partner who has got other partners also then she's at a risk of STI. If she has got previous history of STI, if uh, she's attending, a, okay, this is same, if any alcohol substance or any drug abuse is there. So if alcohol substance abuse is there, usually they are more uh, intent to have multiple sexual partner. So these are the few uh, people who are at a risk of STI. So whenever, you know, whenever we do contraception, advice to any patient, always this STI risk assessment is always done. Okay, this uh, this part, like, like maybe this is useful for your part two exam, but part three people, they put all this thing in their stations. Now, what, this I already just said. So uh, what is the prerequisite for IUS? You have to take medical history, you have to take sexual history. It is very important. Now, some benefit of LNG IUS is there what are the benefits of lng ius like uh, for marina we have just remember uh, uh, like uh, read before also so it provides endometrial protection and also because uh, uh, there is a uh, it, it reduces the pain of uh, primary dysmenorrhea adenomyosis also it uh, it decreases because it period uh, they will be either spotting or they will be amenorrhea so the, it reduces menstrual bleeding so we are using it as a in the management of HMV. This part you already know. There are certain side effects. 
So side effects are acne, breast tenderness, pain, headaches, and mood changes. These are there. And uh, you know, sometimes this acne and headache, we, these are the few things people will come and they will ask for LNG IUS removal. Then uh, first uh, three to six months, uh, they can have irregular frequent bleeding, but later on bleeding pattern will improve with time. And with a one year of uh, infrequent bleeding, actually some of the women, they will have amenorrhea. Okay, so this part is important to remember because sometimes they will ask question that patient has come back after insertion of uh, IUS and she is worried about uh, infrequent bleeding. Okay. So, so your answer will come as assurance only. Now, LNG, IUS, and breast cancer, though uh, the evidence does not support that there is a link between breast cancer and LNG, IUS, but on the other side, if uh, um, the patient should be advised uh, or other non-hormonal method of contraception, if she is having a breast cancer, but if she wants only LNG, IUS, then you have to do consultation with the uh, oncologist or cancer doctor so some you how question uh, how how question you will get you want this nikita yes ma'am okay so uh, 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 side effect of lng ius is acne breast tenderness headache and mood changes and uh, only with this acne and because of this headache most of the women they will come back and uh, you have to just, uh, um, okay, so, so like, um, this is a frequent reason they want removal of LNG IUS. So uh, again, what can happen in first three to six months, there will be irregular uh, frequent bleeding can be there, but these are the pattern, menstrual pattern, they improve with time. And usually one year of frequent bleeding is usual. Later on, they will have complete amenorrhea. So you will get question in the in your uh, like exam. So LNG IUS was inserted. She's having spotting or infrequent ble bleeding, and she's very worried about it. So your answer will come as counseling. Okay, is it clear? Yes, yes, ma'am. Prerequisite slide. So this is the prerequisite slide. Um, Abhishek wanted to know this. So uh, actually, you have to take medical history. You have to take sexual history. That is routine. Before this, you will not uh, do give uh, offer L any um, uh, contraception. And this med why we are taking medical history because with this medical history, we will get uh, whether she belongs to category three or four. So in that situation, you have to say no to it, and you have to take sexual history. Because if she's having, like if right now she's having infection, active chlamydia or active uh, gonorrhea is there, then she belongs to, becomes category four. You will not insert this LNG IUS. Okay. So apart from this, now if a patient is asymptomatic and uh, she wants to go ahead with the insertion, then uh, you can just provide antibiotic prophylaxis and uh, then uh, like uh, IUS can be inserted and or you uh, uh, swabs can be taken. If the swabs come positive, then in that situation, you will call this patient back. So what they want to tell you that if the patient is asymptomatic, then um, either you can provide antibiotic prophylaxis or STA or you can just take swabs and you will insert um, the IUS, and when the result will come back, then this patient will be contacted again. So in asymptomatic patient, if you have got suspicion of infection, you can give her um, LNG IUS. Is the thing clear, Abhishek? Okay, and now benefits we have done just now. Side effects also we have done just now. I'm not repeating. Breast cancer part, just, uh, just read, uh, like uh, I'm reading it again. So if evidence, like we do not have evidence to support that LNG IUS has got a link with breast cancer. But uh, on the other side, Nalini, if the asymptomatic question is there, 
uh, sorry, if asymptomatic patient is there, either of two things you have to do one, either at before the insertion, you will give her antibiotic prophylaxis. This could be one thing. Another thing, you will, in, uh, you will take swabs and you will insert IUCD if the result of swab comes as positive. So this patient will be contacted again, then she'll be giving antibiotics. There are two things will be there. Is it clear, Nalini? Okay, fine. Now, uh, uh, this breast cancer I was discussing. So if uh, actually if the patient uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, has a, any uh, this thing, history of uh, breast cancer, then in that particular situation, uh, like uh, uh, non uh, ideally, non-hormonal contraception will be more suitable. But if she wants uh, LNG IUS, then in that particular situation, you have to consult her LNG IUS. So in your questions, your stem of answer will be LNG, uh, consultation with onco doctor. Okay. Now, LNG IUS with ectopic pregnancy. Though the chances of ectopic pregnancy with LNG IUS is very less, but if pregnancy occurs, LNG IUS in C2, there are more than half of the pregnancies will be ectopic pregnancies. Okay, so this is important, uh, important to know. Then risk of expulsion, this you will get question in many times. You will get this question many, many times. So risk of expulsion is there. That is one in 20, this number you have to remember. And most commonly it occurs um, within uh, uh, first three months of insertion. So please remember this number. This you have to remember. Risk of expulsion one in 20. And um, usually it happens within first three, day, first three months of insertion. Then uh, with the LNG IUS, sometimes uh, cyst, ovarian cyst may occur, but this cyst may be a uh, sorry, it will be asymptomatic cyst. You sometimes you will find this also in the question. This also you have to remember by heart because this number you will get in the exam. So rate of uterine perforation with IUC is two per uh, thousand, and it is six times higher if the patient is breastfeeding. You already know because the uterus is involuting, it is smaller in size. So uh, as it becomes small, so chances of perforation is high and it is six times. So this number you have to remember. So remember all uh, uh, this num all numbers by heart. Risk of expulsion one in 20, particularly in first three months. Risk of uh, perforation is two in 1000 and usually it is six times higher in breastfeeding women. Okay. Then uh, the, you, sometime you will get question for this also. What, uh, what is the scene of cervical preparation before insertion? Usually uh, like uh, they are not, uh, give, uh, they, there is no evidence to just use uh, local, anesthet local or uh, lignocaine before its insertion. NACID may be offered to reduce pain or cramps to the patient. And local can be given in one condition if uh, the cervical dilatation is required and it is difficult okay because sometimes we are not able to insert iucd and dilatation is required so that time local can be given then problematic bleeding with lng ius answer is coc it can be tried for three months okay uh, uh, this uh, this also you have to remember so coc can be done uh, can be taken for three months if there, there had been a problem, problematic bleeding with LNG IUS. Then this part is important to remember. So what lost IUD, what you will do, though you are doing daily in your uh, in the clinics or hospitals, but again, uh, it is important. So now, first of all, a uh, patient has come, doctor, I don't, I can't see threats or I can't feel threats. Then first, what you will do? You will think, uh, you will, uh, whether she's pregnant. So, here some mistake can happen because uh, what is the next step if they have put exclude pregnancy and ultrasound most of the uh, uh, candidate they will give answer as ultrasound scan but no next step will be exclude pregnancy fine 
so you know you have we have you need to know this uh, uh, like flow chart as it is because uh, they, the direct questions will be directly from them uh, so no threats please do urine pregnancy test please exclude pregnancy now if the patient is not pregnant then you have to do ultrasound scan ultrasound scan to locate it and that that time if she has got the, like unprotected intercourse so emergency contraception has to be done so this you will take history you will find out accordingly you will give her emergency contraception now there will be two scenarios you have done usg scan and you found yes copper disease inside the uterus then your life is easy either if she says uh, if, uh, if she still wants to continue that as a contraception then it can be left in situ but if she wants no i want to remove it so either it can be done with a long forceps or uh, this iucd thread retriever is there it can be used and if nothing is possible you have to take this patient for hysteroscopy this part is easy but on the uh, uh, other side um, you have arranged an ultrasound scan and there is no property sorry no iu uh, lng i use what you will do then you will uh, ex uh, arrange the x ray x ray of abdomen and pelvis if that uh, so maybe it is perforated if the device is uh, uh, located now a device located that means it is lying somewhere in, in the abdomen of the patient so you have you have, you need to uh, arrange for a laparoscopic removal um, uh, and it it can uh, it is not an emer medical emergency unless bowel or vessel perforation is suspected okay so and now the, uh, lap uh, this um, the, the device has been taken out so when you can array uh, insert it again so answer is 4 weeks so please remember this answer okay i also when uh, uh, when i was studying i never remembered this but uh, when i was making this presentation then i i, I just found it important to put it here so if patient uh, if the uh, laparoscopy has been done property or IU, uh, um, ius has been uh, retrieved and this patient wants to put it back so when it can be done so you so you, you will give answer 4 weeks after it so the, please remember this then second option now uh, uh, like you have done uh, film is adequate and uh, you you uh, you are not able to find out on the x ray that means expulsion had happened and patient doesn't know uh, is not aware of it in that particular situation you can insert iud or ius immediately okay so everything you know already same protocol you are doing in your hospital just remember this word that if uh, um, like uh, if any uh, laparoscopic removal has been done then uh, and she she wants reinsertion so it can be done after four weeks of perforation just remember this so is the this flow chart clear anyone of you have got any question with this any question <laughs> okay clear fine good uh, sometime you will find a question in in the uh, in the exam like when the patient has to be followed up so either, either she can be called after first menses or she can be called 3 to 6 weeks later after insertion so this will be the answer uh so uh, apart from this whenever insertion is done we always give them safety advice if any sign of infection is there any sign of perforation is there then she can come any time okay and if she has got no problem then follow up will be done after first period or it will be done 3 to 6 weeks later on now uh, this part is important to uh, like remember so according to the new guideline uh, pop implant and lng ius these three contraception they can be used beyond a 50 till 55 but dmpa is only uh, used till 50 why it is till 50 you already know because it causes loss of bone mineral density so in progesterone just remember this all other can be used beyond 50 till 55 but dmpa you have to change it or stop it by 50 
Okay, Nivedita, problem is from your internet. I'll be putting link to this recording so you can listen that much I can do, you know. For all other, my voice is clear. Is it okay? Yes, okay. Thank you, Madhu. Fine. Okay, this part you have to remember very well. For, uh, okay. LNG, IUS, category three are so many. Okay, and you will get question from here also. So postpartum 48 hours till 28 days or four weeks is category three. Okay, complicated organ transplant. Initiation is category three. This part is same. Current and ischemic heart disease and stroke continues category three. This is different, only, only there in LNG, IUS only. So uh, long QT interval, long QT interval, it, you have to remember this, this is LNG, IU, uh, IUS category three. Decreasing HCG levels, for example, patient had moles, molar pregnancy, but HCG level are decreasing. And if you give LNG, IUS to that patient, as you it is lng LNG it is category three if patient has radical tracheotomy that is removal of cervix it is category three this uh, asymptomatic breast uh, past uh, distorted cavity distorted cavity that means cavity is distorted because of fibroids or because of anomaly category three you already know if the cavity is distorted and you are putting lng ius you are going to perforate it. So it is category three. This way you can remember, you know. Past breast cancer, all progesterone category three. Asymptomatic chlamydia is category three. Okay, A, you have to remember this also. Asymptomatic uh, uh, chlamydia, it is category three. Pelvic tuberculosis is diagnosed. And the, uh, if the patient is continuing this, it is category three. CD3 count, CD4 count less than 200 in HIV patient. CD4 count less than 200 is category three. Hepatocellular adenoma and carcinoma, it is for all, it is category three. I will, say, I will uh, share this uh, snapshot of category three and four. Like you have to remember it only, that is the only issue. Category four, in all other uh, um, progesterone, category four was only one. That is current breast cancer. But LNG IUS, there are so many category four, you know. So, the, but easy to remember. Why? Post sepsis, you will not insert anything. So, postpartum sepsis, post abortion sepsis. Current PID, what we were discussing just now. So, current PID, if she's having uh, current chlamydia, current gonorrhea, or purulent cervicitis, current category, it is uh, current PID. And if you are putting that in that condition, starting it, so it is category four. Fine. So this, all this belongs to infection. Again, symptomatic chlamydia, gonorrhea start is category four. Pelvic tuberculosis start is category four. Now you can remember all these are the infection group. Postpartum sepsis, abortion sepsis, current PID, symptomatic chlamydia, gonorrhea, pelvic tuber tuberculosis. All starts are category three. Sorry, sorry, category four. So, okay, so now you can remember all, all active infection category four. Cervical cancer patient waiting uh, treatment. Okay, so like cervical cancer patient awaiting treatment and if you want to put it, you are going to perforate it. So it becomes category four. This is the way to remember, you know. Then persistent H, uh, H, uh, HCG, that means um, H, you are dealing with a molar uh, disease that is malignant type. So uh, you are going to perforate. It is category four. Current breast cancer for all progesterone is category four. Endometrium cancer. Again, in cancer, if you are starting it, then it is uh, category four. Okay. This part I have, uh, I, I put it again. Current chlamydia and gonorrhea. That means symptomatic chlamydia and gonorrhea. It is category four. So uh, these are the category four of LNG IUS. You have to learn them by heart because the, the, uh, from this table, you are going to get questions. So, uh, yes. 
you are right nalini that is the better way so all current infections and all current cancers like current breast cancer um, this current uh, endometrial cancer a uh, molar uh, malignant molar, uh, molar cervical cancer patient waiting treatment so all they become to category 4 this is also a good way to remember so uh, th 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 that's all about lng ius and that's all about progesterone contraception now i'll be uh, giving um, uh, like uh, now you have to do some questions so that i'm so that uh, it is uh, you, uh, i am able to make you understand the topic so uh, any one of you have got any question can ask me otherwise no hello. i'll be asking yes yes hello hello doctor uh, mm -hmm. just with, uh, that one endometrial protection the lng ius is uh, licensed for the 4 years no uh, and you told that 5 years uh, that uh, 25 to 30 micrograms uh, will be decreased so from that period onwards we can use for the endometrial protection how uh, yeah. is there is there any specific condition madam for that to specify that to continue for the endometrial protection more than the 4 years because it is licensed only up to the 4 years okay, uh, okay. so actu actually um, if you are using this as a contraception so it can okay. be used 5 years okay that okay. is one thing okay, okay. and okay. if uh, it is being used for endometrial protection then mm. uh, it is for 4 years according to their guidelines you know but sometimes okay. you will find a question that uh, a patient has got uh, uh, like uh, lng ius uh, already there and she uh, wants to continue this for endometrial protection then mm. uh, then also she can continue there are some years for that so that mm. i will update you but uh, what i remember from my previous knowledge that is for up to i think for 7 years they can continue uh, okay. if she, they it is already inserted and she has got menopause now for endometrial protection it can be extended okay okay yeah and one more question ma'am is there mm -hmm. any the category for the endometrial cancer for continuation if it is recognized after right is there anything like that for the start it is the category 4 is there mm -hmm. anything for the continuation no they are, they have not no we have they to are remove not. it they have not uh, yeah they have not uh, uh, specified it so whatever okay. i have put is from uk mac tables only you know not a single okay. word i have added from my head yes okay ma'am okay ma'am okay. okay thank you ma'am thank you okay any other question uh no no abhishek if the patient is symptomatic insertion done swabs come positive for chlamydia no you will call her and you will give her treatment you will not remove it okay um, in the guideline somebody it is been 12 weeks okay so uh, uh, like someone has asked this question so it uh, actually she has to come at 13th week she, if the patient is on dmpa so at that th 13th week after 12 weeks on the starting of 13th week she has to come for dmpa but dmpa action it uh, like uh, itself prolongs so if she is coming one week late also or she is coming at 14th week also then also her contraceptive effect of dmpa will continued so you need not to give her additional contraception is the thing clear is the thing clear okay any other question any other question okay no question hope i am able to make that this topic easy for you okay now you have to give me answer so read this
yes nalini it is right For, uh, if she is coming after 14 days then she would require additional contraception so uh, the this is the question the, these are the options you know these are the options and this is the question you read this question okay so uh, now uh, i'm showing this again now you have to give me answer so this patient has sexual intercourse with her partner two days ago uh, for uh, like uh, madhu nikita and uh, uh, g you have to just think that she had intercourse with her partner two days ago so uh, she is up by more than 14 weeks and she has intercourse also now what will be the choice read again in f they are saying emergency contraception not required up to 14 weeks it's not required no ma'am it was two days ago so it is just 14 weeks she has had upsi i'm sure that 14 weeks and the duration of action is almost over so she is more reliable for i mean like she can become pregnant so we have to give additional contraceptive So yeah, you have to give her. So she uh, like uh, she had last injection fourteen weeks plus two days, and uh, during this time she had intercourse. Okay, after fourteen weeks she has had intercourse. But it is two days ago, no ma'am. Two days ago means it will come within the fourteen weeks, no? The last day of the fourteenth week. Okay, that much uh, like that much you cannot really decide. But if she is, it is a bit difficult. So she has got the uh, 14 weeks plus two days, and she had intercourse during this time. Okay, when she was not protected for any uh, contraception. So you have to give her emergency contraception also. So answer will be C. Administer next injection. Offer emergency contraception. additional contraception uh, uh, um, additional contraception for 7 days okay and if pregnancy test has to be carried out that after 21 days why because if any unprotected intercourse uh, uh, act has happened and pregnancy come become test becomes positive so it will take 21 days so people answer will be c it will be not f why not f because uh, they are saying no emergency contraception but yes this for this patient emergency contraception is required so okay so answer becomes c okay so what they are saying it is thought injection it will be effective up to 14 weeks between injection in in most of the individuals but overdue is therefore counted as 14 weeks plus one day so she has uh, intercourse like two weeks uh, two days back uh, i mean the after 14 weeks they what they are saying she is having intercourse so it was the last day or not that i can't say but as the 14 day goes up 14 weeks goes up and she is having intercourse so you have to give her emergency contraception also yes answer is c so you read this no it is not required first you read question have 
Okay, so this answer you everyone will be able to give me. Okay, good, excellent. Everyone is learning well. So answer is A. So uh, uh, FS, FSH has to be done if it is more than 40. As she is more than 50, so uh, contraception is required for one more year. Very good. So uh, read this question. Madam B, inhibition of ovulation. Very good, excellent. Yes, it is B. Eternal gestural D. Very good, it is D. And you have to remember this table also. One day I think someone was asking me about this table. So I said I will show in the class. So uh, like it is just a summary. So um, IUS, IUS failure rate is less than one in 100. Expulsion rate is one in 20. This I we read just now. Progesterone injection failure rate is less than 0 0.4 in 100 over 100 in 100 over two years and implant you have to remember so pregnancy rate is less than one in 100 because of this implant is the most effective one i think uh, i think pratik was asking me about this table so um, now this is the answer uh, you, you can remember from here also in a dmpa injection and implant they prevent by ovulation ius causes atrophy so it makes difficulty in implantation this table is taken from nice guideline but that nice guideline is very old about contra uh, uh, about lark there is a nice guideline okay so from there this table is there but that is very old but uh, still question answer comes from here Next question. A, dipomedroxy progesterone. Yeah, all will do this right. Very good, excellent. Yeah, you know this. C. Hello? Yes, 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 I'm listening. The answer is C. Yes, very good. We have discussed that because of the bone mineral density thing. Now I will show you a question. Okay, now I'm showing you options. Implant on them. E, implant on. She is in a new relationship for past three weeks. 
So this this also has got some meaning. Young girl, sexually active from last two years, that means 16 years, new relationship. These are the clue to this question. Double Dutch method. Very good. Double Dutch method. What is this double Dutch? That means barrier plus reliable contraception. So uh, Madhu said implanon. Implanon is right, but it has to be implanon plus condom. So answer becomes double Dutch. Okay, Madhu, is it clear? Yeah. yeah yeah so this is bad because uh, now this is a sexual risk assessment now you can see that they they just try to give you a hint that this this girl will have uh, like a number of partners so therefore without barrier you cannot do this read this question Okay, so now these are the options. LNGIUS. LNG yeah. B. Yes, very good. LNGIUS is the answer. Why it is an answer? Because she has got clothing, painful period, and completed family. So these are the two uh, things that uh, are putting answer as LNG IUS. Uh, yeah, anyone has got any question? Read this question. Okay, these are the options. H mini pill. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so I'm getting H as mini pill. Kavita is saying B, LNG IUS. No, Kavita, B will not come. Why? Because uh, she is looking for short-term contraceptive. Okay, so short-term contraceptive, it cannot be. Uh, 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 it cannot be uh, your LNG IUS. Pratik saying, why not D? Male condoms. Male condoms are not reliable. Again, they are male dependent. Male condom will not come here. So condom are not reliable source of contraception. Everybody knows that. The condoms are used for only STI prevention. Fine. So um, now clue to this answer will be, she she was happy. So she, this is a postnatal patient breastfeeding. So breastfeeding patient, progesterone contraception you will give. She was happy with combined pills. She has got no complaints. That means she's a good patient, compliant patient. Needle phobia, answer DMPA will not come. Because of this needle phobia, no DMPA in answer. Because of short-term contraception, LNG, IUS will not come in answer. Okay, so now what is the left out thing? That is POP only. Fine, is, that, uh, is the thing clear? So uh, all my answer will be mini pill. Read this question. So now uh, sh these are the options. Hmm. 
Ma'am, I outpatient endometrial sampling, ma'am. <laughs> or triple swabs. E. Somebody said, okay, I will I will give uh, remove implanon and start. Uh, so L has some someone has done L as an answer, remove implanon. But she this patient is not on implanon. Why L somebody has put in the answer? E is triple swab. And what other person some, some, somebody said uh, outpatient endometrial sampling also. Yes. Okay. So now and you have to understand. Um, answer those who are saying triple swab that is the right answer. Now I have to give reason. So this is patient is having irregular vaginal bleeding, and she is. This is the question. Nalini, this is the question. I will show options again. So this is uh, uh, she's having irregular bleeding for four month duration. She has been microgynon for past eight years. So that means she was taking microgynon for eight years. So she she is adjusted to microgynon. So this is uh, from uh, like eight years. She has got no problem. Now she's having irregular bleeding and new relationship. So why she's having a irregular bleeding a new relationship? Whenever a new relationship you see in your question, just think of STI. Think of, okay. yeah, think of STI. So answer is E, triple swab. Endometrial sampling will not come here in the answer. We have done in last class where, uh, when to do go for endometrial sampling. Okay. Uh, if this patient is more than 45 years of age, <laughs> If you see that uh, all other risk factor of cancer is there, uh, then you will go for uh, endometrial biopsy. Okay, and if you, uh, but, uh, we have done in last class if that much in details. But here in this patient, she's a young patient. She was happy with microgynon. New relationship, it is STI. Okay, breakthrough bleeding is marker also. But this patient was uh, controlled with POP. So it is. it may be a marker of STI. Whenever you see in your question, new relationship, multiple partner, just think of STI and barrier. Is it clear? OK, this is another question. Okay, so these are the options. Hello. The answer is C. C. Somebody's mic is on. Please off mic. Yes, I'm counseling and reassurance. Yeah, yeah, answer is C. Very good. Good approach. Okay. Read this. Change to Lark G. Yes, yes, very good. So um, you have to, uh, if uh, because it being an enzyme inducer, because we read in last class all zeppins are enzyme inducers. So you have to change it to Lark. Read this question.
again lark ma'am so she has already implant is already inserted by lark i think she, she needs endometrial bleeding. sampling she has she gained weight and there is irregular bleeding with implant on gain weight is not uh, that is just an uh, like uh, to deviate your attention so that gain weight is not an issue irregular so in implant on, on has been has fitted ma'am coc to be added ma'am okay so, uh, just, uh, actually this um, if they have recently inserted implant or any recently they have used any contraception uh then there is a problem then you usually give all other treatment but now this patient has used uh, already for two and half years there had been no problem for two and half years okay so why sudden problem is there so and also like she is smoking that much so this is the it is showing some uh, like what we read is a substance use and any uh, like uh, this thing also so this is a high sex risk behavior in sti risk assessment we we recently read that any kind of this thing so this is they are what they are pointing that with this implant if she it is there is no problem with two and half years why she is having a problem again second this cigarette is showing sti risk assessment part so what the answer is there is um, infection because breakthrough bleeding is common but in this patient it could be a, a sign of this thing uh, sti only so change will not be the answer here yeah, because of the cigarette thing okay, yeah because of the cigarette thing so they are showing that type of behavior okay and if the same patient uh, uh, like uh, um if this patient implant has recently been inserted inserted and she is having problem with irregular bleeding then you will think that this patient is not getting adjusted to implant then you will give additional treatment for coc okay now uh, uh, if uh, usually they are not removing implant unless it becomes non palpable uh, like impalpable so there will be no indication to change it or remove it so this is Wait, one thing what man just sorry to interrupt you ma'am weight gain yeah. won't uh, won't any uh, effect no. on the implant no oh. no no we just uh, ah. um, uh, read that sorry, implant okay. no no sorry it's fine this is just in okay. discussion implant is not associated with any weight gain okay so uh, just in uh, no uh, no i'm asking ma'am because of the weight gain is there any uh, competency decrease in the implant on no we just uh, like that BMI, okay bmi and implant okay. has got no relationship okay 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 okay, okay. thank you only only like if she is using in first few months and she is having a problematic bleeding then uh, then you can add that treatment but if uh, um, and, and if you find that uh, there is no uh, sti risk assessment is uh, you do if you find some factor then sti risk assessment that swab or barrier thing will come from an answer but if you find nothing question is like that patient is uh, two and half years using implant and she has got no problem they have not given any other thing and something has come up that you think could be a uh, associated with the endometrial pathology then your answer for that biopsy thing will come okay for this patient uh, because they, as they had given smoking so they are pointing towards high risk behavior so answer will be uh, um, sti uh, uh, sti ruling so answer is triple swab in this question okay okay mm -hmm. now what will be the answer to this question mm -hmm.
very good all d's are uh, right or b thing is wrong because uh, people uh, women with known pelvic tuberculosis they have not there put in their table if the active tuberculosis is there then they are saying this um, category 4 so uh, main uh, main here uh, main here uh, is uh, uh, breast cancer so past breast cancer i am repeating it many times past breast cancer for all progesterone is category 3 present cancer breast cancer in all progesterone is category 4 just remember this thing now these are the category 3 things so uh, pe a woman with known pelvic losses i don't know what they want to put but in their guideline it was pelvic tuberculosis is already diagnosed and if this patient wants to continue then it is category 3 okay so uh, with this like if the thing is not clear with known pelvic tuberculosis that means she had tuberculosis before now you are giving her lng ius so in that situation this will not come category 3 if she was known with like previously she had pelvic tuberculosis but they are not saying right now she is having it okay so answer becomes d that is category uh, past history of breast cancer so this is lng ius category 3 this we just read so all past breast cancer will be category 3 D, ma'am. Which one? D, D, ma'am. The woman is within seven days post abortion or miscarriage. Yeah, but within seven days, no, no, uh, nothing is required. Okay, ma'am. Sorry, five days, I thought. Okay. Five days was for POP, POP. Okay. and implant and DMPA. For mm -hmm. uh, LNG, IUS, it was seven days. Seven days. Yes, so. E, E. Yes. Answer is E. She is partially breastfeeding, amenorrheic, less than three months postpartum. So uh, that means she could, uh, in this situation, there could be a possibility of uh, like a returning of ovulation because she is not partially, fully breastfeeding. Fine. So answer becomes E. Read this question. Okay, so this is the question and this is the options. Now they can confuse so much. Yes, very good. Very good. Answer is LNG IUS. Why? Because she is uh, she is divorced. That means no more children. She is uh, ha having para four, so like uh, um, the family complete almost. She is heavy periods. So answer will be LNG IUS. Uh, it's again levonorgestrel uh, D. Yes.
okay somebody somebody wrote a also pratik you wrote a so uh, why a or coc why coc because she does not want children in near future uh lamotrigine it causes coc uh, uh like a uh, level of lamotrigine will go down with coc frequency of seizure increases okay this we discussed last class that lamotrigine is not an enzyme inducer but lamotrigine it uh, interacts with the estrogen metabolism so uh, during 21 days of coc levels of lamotrigine will fall down so this patient will be as a, 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 at a risk of seizures and during 7 days when there is no coc lamotrigine level will high up that will be there, there will be risk of toxicity because of all this situation lamotrigine with coc is not given okay i i i i answer i we have discussed in last class also therefore uh, uh, coc uh, coc will not be in, uh, like uh, coc will not be given to this patient so no to coc fine and uh, like um, yeah d is okay d is the answer d is the answer why d is the answer because she uh, in future, near future she does not want children that means she is looking for long term contraception so coc we will not give and patch we will not give because both of the, them contains estrogen okay so a and c is out yeah ivra is combined patch we discussed that last class and deoxy uh, uh, she is 18 years old so dmpa also you will not give nuva ring is also contains estrogen and progesterone so uh, your coc your patch and nuva ring all three contains estrogen so they will not become your answer answer will lie between b and d b you will not give because this patient uh, is 18 years old that means young patient so left out option is only lng ius is it uh, clear just in case if in the option if implanon was given yeah so answer will be then implanon can be answered then so the, okay, they will not give either they will give you implanon or they will give you lng ius if they give both okay. in the answer then it will be difficult okay ma'am yeah now the things is clear about this question is it clear okay good so answer is d we already discussed that read this question mini pill ma'am okay you read this options also first l progesterone only pill Yes, L progesterone only pill. Read this question. LNG IUS.
Yes, LNG AUS is the answer. Okay. So any one of 